Hey, how are you? Today I want to go over what to expect at a Chapter 13 Bankruptcy 341 meeting. Hi, I'm Scott Allen. Hope you're having a great day. Today I want to kind of go through what should you expect at a Chapter 13 Bankruptcy 341 meeting. And let's talk about what it is, what are some of the normal questions that takes place there, and what are some of the pitfalls or mistakes that I see people make at these 341 meetings. Now I want you to remember that I am a consumer bankruptcy attorney in Alabama and I primarily practice in the Northern District of Alabama in the Birmingham Division and the Tuscaloosa Division. So my experiences are sort of limited to, to that area and how our trustees do things. So you wanna make sure that you reach out to a, a lawyer in your division to make sure that there's not something specific that your trustee is looking for in that area. So let's go ahead and jump right in. This hearing takes place approximately 30 days after the case is filed. It's an administrative hearing. It's not in front of a judge. It's presided over or the chapter 13 trustee or their staff attorney is the person who normally presides over these hearings. It's an opportunity for the chapter 13 trustee to ask you questions about your bankruptcy petition along with an opportunity of your creditors to show up and ask questions as well. That doesn't happen in the majority of cases, but there are times when creditors show up and do ask questions. So normally at the meeting, the trustee will ask a series of routine questions to all debtors that are attending the meeting. Then the trustee will sometimes tailor specific questions to each debtor based upon certain ways that they've responded or certain things that they've listed in their bankruptcy petition. Some of the normal typical questions that, that are asked at these Chapter 13 meetings are as, did you list all of your assets in your bankruptcy petition? Did you list all of your debts? Have you made your Chapter 13 payment? Because those payments are due within the first 30 days of your case. Uh, do you have any claims or lawsuits where you can sue someone for money damages? Are you required to pay any child support obligations? And if so, are you current on those obligations? The trustee may ask if you're still employed. And if you're not employed, the trustee may ask if you're still receiving your social security disability benefits or your retirement to verify income. Those are just some sample questions that the trustee may ask. Now, back before the pandemic, we had these hearings at the actual courthouse. And, and so to help with anxiety, because most people's first chance of going to court or ever being in court may be this hearing. And so to help with the anxiety of the day before court or going to court, I always ask my clients to do a drive-by. Maybe the weekend before when traffic's not bad around the courthouse or that area, drive by, find out, make sure you know where you're going, make sure you know where you're gonna park. If you're gonna be parking at a parking meter, make sure you got enough change to park in the parking meter or make sure you got some money or a way to pay to get out of the parking deck. If the hearing is at the courthouse, there's always courthouse security. It's like going to the airport. So make sure you leave all your weapons and things at the car. You don't want to show up at security and have something in your purse or in your pocket that would cause you to have to turn around and take it back to the car. And if you're running late, you may miss the hearing. So typically these hearings move pretty quickly. Now the total length of the hearing, if there's a lot of people there, could take a while depending on where you are on the docket most people's individual portion of the hearing goes fairly quickly. So now what do the hearings look like post COVID? Well, all the ones that I've attended except one or two early on have been by telephone. And so instead of answering questions over the phone, which there may be some, our, our local trustees are asking the debtors to fill out interrogatories. And interrogatories are where we, those questions the trustee would normally ask, we pre-fill them out. We have, we have the client fill them out ahead of time and they're signed under the penalty of perjury of law and they're submitted to the trustee before the court hearing. And so we're then tasked with making sure the trustee, we've submitted all the documents ahead of time that, that, that we've submitted proof of your identification, proof of your social security number, which you would normally bring these things to the courthouse if we weren't providing it ahead of time. But those are some of the things that has kind of changed. And I think some of the courts around the country may even be conducting these meeting of creditors by virtual, by Zoom or Microsoft Teams 
or some other form of communication. That's sort of the typical thing that, that goes on at these meetings. Uh, again, they're usually not adversarial. Here are some of the mistakes that I'm seeing, especially in the post-COVID matter, is that people are calling in to these hearings. They're not putting their phones on mute. So we hear a lot of background noise. We may have conversations of people taking place during the meeting. You know, it's very disruptive to, to the process. And these things are recorded, so you really don't want your personal conversation with, with your spouse or your kids recorded on a federal court docket. So make sure you follow your lawyer's instructions. In, in our jurisdiction, it seems to be sort of the best practice is, is that you call in to the hearing, you put your phone on mute, you leave your phone on mute until your case is called, and then you unmute your phone, and, and then you announce that you're there. Make sure that you're in a quiet place. When you unmute your phone, you don't want a lot of TV and background noise going on, the radio, people talking. Go to a bedroom, close the door. You know, if you're in your car, try not to be driving. Pull over, just make sure you're in a quiet place. All Doing all these little things will help ensure that your bankruptcy 341 meeting goes as smooth as possible. So I hope this information was helpful for you. If you've got some debt related problems and you need some assistance with some of those things, you know, feel free to reach out to me, give me a call, shoot me an email. I'll be glad to help walk you through those things if you need some assistance. Um, I hope you have a great day.